By now you know quite a lot about regression analysis. You now know how the regression equation works and you know how to measure a certain relationship. But is that all? Well, of course it's not. In this video I would like to talk about significance. You already know about that. But let's remind ourselves what statistical significance is. Remember that most values in inferential statistics are not fixed values. They are mere point estimates and they come with a certain uh, confidence interval. Um, the same can be said uh, about our regression parameters. Now you might say, why should there be uncertainty? We have the regression line and we don't need a confidence interval. Well, that is not true. Think of it like this. So let me draw a regression line. You have your scatter plot and your regression line. So, right there. Um, now, somewhere out there, there's a true regression line and we try to estimate this true regression line with our data. So the true regression line might look something like, I don't know, might look something like this. So maybe this is the true regression line. Um, there are several reasons reasons why this would be not the same or this could be not the same. Um, still, it's only an estimation and our regression line is only the point estimate of our estimation. So imagine the following. Let me get the, this one away. Okay, so imagine the following. Um, imagine a normal density while our regression line goes straight through the peaks of the normal density plot. So I'm really bad at drawing three-dimensional, but let's imagine there are these normal probability or normal density curves. Okay, so it might look something like this. Um, although this sounds highly theoretical, it's very important. For us, it means that we always have to think about the confidence interval um, of our regression parameters. So let's take a simple example. You want to explain the amount of congiaria, um, that is the monetary gifts given by a Roman emperor, uh, in total over his lifespan by his years in power. So we have two numerical variables. We have um, the um, dependent variable, so the dependent variable, or let's call it dv, let's call it dv, and this is, uh, this is our dependent var variable, this is congaria in millions, and we have our, let me get do that in red, our independent variable that is years in power. Okay, now we want to explain this or the dependent variable um, the uh, given congiaria in sesterzi for example. Um, we want to explain this with the years in power of a ruler. So we want to explain the congiaria of a certain ruler um, in total um, by his years in power. Now, um, this data is made up, by the way. Um, we put the data into R and get back the following regression equation. So we get back a regression equation and it might look something like it, like this. So let's call it, let's call this variable uh, con, for con gearia. hat, of course, it's an estimation, is equal to, let's say 0 0.7 plus 0 0.12 times um, years. Okay, now this is our regression equation that we get back from R. Um, now, what do we make of this? Well, the constant, so the constant 07, this right here, um, this tells us that if our independent variable, so if our independent variable years um, is zero, the sum given in million sesterzia is equal to 0 0.7 million. Well, let's ignore that constant, because that is unrealistic, since you cannot be a ruler if you're not in power. Um, but what does that 0.12 say? What does that say? 0.12 times years. What does that say? Well, it tells us that for every year in power, the total sum of congaria increases by 0.12 million sesterzia. So it increases by, uh, by this amount in millions, in million sesterzia for every year in power. Um, well, um, we might also get an R squared for this, but this is not of interest now. Since we know that these are only point estimates, so these, this, and this, 
These are these are parameters, and these are only point estimates. Um, there are two numbers to check. Well, R will give you what is called a standard error. So it will give you a standard error or errors um, for every so a standard error for every um, regressor or every parameter. Okay, the standard error basically is the 95% confidence interval for the value of the parameters. Now, what are parameters again? If you look at the regression equation, our parameters are the coefficients. So 0.7 is a param parameter. This is what we call the intercept. And so this is the intercept, 0.7. And this is 0.12. This is also a parameter. This is a regressor or a, a coefficient. Um, and again, these are only point estimates. So we have to check their confidence interval. And for, for example, R might tell us that the standard error for the coefficient of our explanatory variable, so we're not interested in the, um, in the intercept, this is not of in interest because that doesn't tell you anything, so we are interested in the, um, um, in the, um, uh, in the confidence interval of our, uh, reg of our coefficient for the independent variable. So uh, R might tell you that the standard error for this right here is equal to all point 15. So you might get a standard error of 0.15. So the 95% confidence interval 0.15. Now, yikes, now we have a problem. Do you see our problem? Well, let's calculate the actual range, the value, could, the, the, the value uh, um, this could take under a 95% confidence interval. So this would be 0.12 or 0.12. Um, 0 0.12 plus 0.15 and 0.12 minus 0.15. Now that the first one that would be equal to uh, 0.27 and this one would be equal to minus 0.03. So under a 95% confidence interval, so the 95% confidence interval is equal to, so the 95% confidence interval is equal to minus 0.03 and 0.03. Seven. This right here, this is our confidence interval for this parameter, okay? Um, why could there be a problem? The value could be zero. That could, this could be equal to exactly zero. And that would mean that there would be absolutely no relationship between both variables. So absolutely no relationship. They absolutely, there's an interaction of zero. Um, now, if that happens, we say that the coefficient is not statistically different from zero. So let's formulate this as a hypothesis. Um, remember, we need a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. So um, how would you formulate such a hypothesis? Well, I'd say the null hypothesis, so HO, I would say um, the null hypothesis would say um, the coefficient, so let's say this is beta one, okay? Well, it might say that beta one is in fact equal to zero. Huh? Um, the alternative hypothesis, so HA or H1, this could be equal to the coefficient B21 is not equal to zero. So these are two uh, are our two hy hypotheses. Uh, the null hypothesis that would state that the coefficient is equal to zero and the alternative hypothesis that states the coefficient is not equal to zero. Um, so it's either above zero or either uh, below zero. So first of all, we have to use a significance level. We need a significance threshold. So let's use um, 0.05 as, as a threshold again. Okay, so um, a significance level of 0.05. And now, R will give us, for, for every single parameter, what we call a p-value. 
So we get what we call a p-value. So let me get some room here. So we get a p-value. So we get a p-value from R and um, this is basically the significance level where our parameters become statistically insignificant from zero. So R might give us a p-value of 0.12. So a, a significance level of 0.12 um, for our independent variable, for, for beta 1. What do we make of this? Well, the value is a buffer threshold of 0.05 and we therefore fail to reject, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So what we have to do is, if our p-value is above a threshold, so if the p-value is greater than our, significance, uh, our, our chosen significance level of 0.05, for example, um, we, we don't have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis and we therefore accept it. Um, we have to accept the null hypothesis that the coefficient is not statistically different from zero. Since the concept, uh, the constant, sorry, since the constant, the intercept is not of real use to us, we can ignore whether it is statistically significant or not. What is of importance is whether this regressor right here is statistically significant from zero. It gives us a p-value of 0.12 of 0.12 and um, our significance level says that we have a significance threshold of 0.05. This is above 0.05 so we therefore fail to reject the null hypothesis and we say that beta 1 is not statistically different from 0.